Welcome to today's video. This is the kickoff of a new series on improvising over single chord vamps. So we're going to start with a single chord because that's going to allow us not only to understand which scale options you have to play over a chord, but also get used to the different sounds, different flavors that are offered by the different musical alphabets, scales, modes, all that stuff in a musical way. Grab your guitar and also before we get started, I would suggest that you pause this video and you check the link below. Enter a valid email address and right away you'll be getting all the files that are going to use in this series. That's backing tracks, charts, I'll, I'll coach you through it as we go through this lesson, but it's a good thing to have. So check out the link below, it's free, and grab your guitar. It's going to be interactive, we're going to try different things. Let's get started. Hi, my name is David Wallerman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players around the world find their unique voice, develop that voice on the instrument to tell their own personal musical story. Today, we're dealing with a single chord vamp, a backing track that you can get with that pack that I told you about. This one right here. The, particu the, the particular aspect of this track is that it's built over one chord. <laughs> Which one? Well, an A minor 7 chord. Not only that, but there's a few elements in there that we need to talk about. First, let's talk about harmony, just a little bit. In music, there really are no rules. As you know, it's a language, we're communicating things, and there's no rules. That said, we're going to decide on a rule today for this lesson because we're trying to understand how music works and without rules it's hard to really understand concepts. The rule is very simple. The rule is that in music you need to respect elements. What are those elements? Well, notes could be elements, but rhythm could be elements too. There's a certain set of things that make what you're hearing what it is. Here, well we've got that kind of groove. So that needs to be, you know, considered when you're playing over that, right? There's also a few, uh, some notes that are happening here. Some notes are played with the guitar, some with the bass and um, keyboards. And these notes are establishing something. They're establishing the, the conversation that you are about to join when you're playing. So you need to be aware of these things. I'm going to help you out by telling you that this right here is an A setting. The A is the root. That's what attracts everything else. How do I know that? Well, there's there's clues in there, and particularly the bass here. If you listen to the bass, the bass is riffing. You always have that bop, 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 always going back to that bop, 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 bop. If I had to pick one note from the bass, it would be bop, 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 bop. Everything else is built around that. That tells me that we are going to build our vocabulary with the A as the, the basis, the ground. All the notes that I'm playing are going to be attracted to that note the, that is played on the bass. You really hear that. Now, if the bass player was nice and wanted to cooperate with the slice, then he'd just be playing that. I can't ask a bass player to just do that. They're going to riff, make it more interesting, but it's based on that A. So A something. A what? Well, here's the cool thing. You don't need to know a bunch of scales, a bunch of vocabulary and all that. You just need good ears. And if we're listening to this, it'll come faster and faster. But if we listen to this and we extract from what we're hearing amongst all the instruments, all the notes that are being played, so you've got to listen long enough to know all these notes, put all these notes in a bucket, reorganize these notes which have letter names alphabetically starting from that root which is A, you will be given the scale or at least a piece of the scale. A piece or the full scale, well that kind of depends on how rich the backing track is. Typically in Western music a scale can be made of seven notes. And again, I know there are exceptions to the rules, but we're just going to consider that. Seven notes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Back to A. 
right? So th these notes have different personalities, different characteristics. They, they're going to really make the emotion, the, 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 the value of these notes is what makes one piece of music different from the other. Uh, another name for the value of these notes is intervals. An interval is the distance between two notes, and if we manipulate the distance between these notes, we'll have different moods. So if A is my starting point, all the notes that I play are attracted to that A, I could build a piece uh, that will sound like this. Another piece like this. It sounded different, right? The same root, the same attraction, but a different emotion here. Why? Because I varied, I manipulated the, the intervals, the nature of these notes. Okay, so I said seven types of notes. How are we going to name them? Well, we're going to name them with numbers. One, that's the root, that's the attraction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And because there are multiple types of music, these numbers, these note characteristics have different personalities, if you will. The three has two. The three could be major or minor. The two also has two, major or minor. As a matter of fact, all these numbers have two personalities. It's not true, but bear with me for a second. All these can be major or minor. So the six can be major or minor seven major or minor and depending on which one you're using different emotional output right now it's not completely true not all of them can be major or minor if you follow this channel for a while you know that already but the one can't be major or minor because the one is the one there's only one one <laughs> the one is the one that attracts something if i if i alter modify that one which in this case is a well i'm no longer in a i'm in something else Okay, uh, there are two other notes that are pretty special. The four and the five, those are right in the middle. If you take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, right in the middle, you have four and five. Those are perfect. Perfect fourth, perfect fifth. Uh, but they can also have different personalities. The fourth and the fifth can be augmented, a little bit bigger, powerful, <laughs> or diminished, a little smaller, a little weaker, tensed. Okay. All right, all that said, um, you need to match musical elements. You can break the rules, yes, but if you want to be understood by most people, appreciated musically by most people, um, you need to match musical elements. So what elements do you need to match? Well, that depends on what you're playing over. Now, if you're alone, just you and your guitar, well, that's great. You do whatever you want. Right? It doesn't matter. But in this case, we're playing over a backing track. We need to match the elements given to you by this. Just imagine that this is a group of people conversing and you're joining that conversation. They're conversing in a language, right? You need to use that language to speak with these people to play over this. If I'm using a language that doesn't match, no matter how hard you try to play, never going to match. However, if I match the elements, I manage to match one really important thing, and that's the alphabet that is used, the language that is used. Now, there are other things, like I mentioned before, rhythm, fr uh, phrasing, um, velocity, how loud a note is, and all those things. But the first thing you need to match is the language, the alphabet that is used, the scale. All right, so this backing track is made of a lot of different notes. Primarily, it's based on a chord, a name minor seven chord, and that's recurring, right? You're not going all over the place, it's, it's matching one thing. A group of notes that together will make a chord, an A minor seven chord. But you've got to listen closely because there's a little more to it. And that's where your ear really will help. There is a, there's a guitar riff going on here. Try to, try to recognize this, uh, this thing. Uh, 
Dum, bum, ba, bum. Bum, ba, da, bum. Those, those three notes are very important too. All the notes are important. So if you were to really pinpoint all the notes that are going on in this backing track, we would have the following notes. We'd have an A minor seven chord arpeggio, which is made of a one, in this case, A. So I'm gonna use this zone of the fretboard. Zones really don't matter because the outcome is the same. You're gonna hear the same thing whether I play a note here or here. Right? It doesn't really matter. But we're going to focus on this zone. So we have a 1, which is A, 6th string, 5th fret. Then we have a minor 3rd, which is, uh, we can play that on the 6th string, 8th fret. We have a 5th, a perfect 5th, on the 5th string, 7th fret. And a minor 7th on the 4th string, 5th fret. These four notes make what we call an A minor 7 chord. So if I play these four notes, it's gonna match. That's matching the elements. If I didn't, it doesn't match. Now remember that riff that I told you about? What's going on here? Well, we have this, which is a fifth. That happens in the chord. We also have this note. Oh, that's a new information. That's a fourth, a perfect fourth. Okay, so I'm going to add my perfect fourth to that bucket of notes that I was extracted from that chord. And then we'll have a minor third. Those are the only notes that you're going to find in there. Very commonly used notes in a minor setting. So to recap, in our bucket, we have a one, a minor th third, also known as the flat third, a fifth, a minor seventh, and we have that fourth in that, that riff. Bup. Ba, ba, bum, five, four, three, three. So the four is in there. Now we reorganize these notes in alphabetical order starting from the one. That's A. So we have one, flat three, four, five, minor seven. Okay, so we have five notes. These notes, coincidentally, happen to be the minor pentatonic scale. I, that's not on purpose, but that's kind of cool. So that means that I could use these uh, five notes over this backing track, and I'm going to match that perfectly. I'm going to be able to converse with this group of people who are speaking this, this language. So one, minor three, four, five, minor seven. That's minor pentatonic. Lucky me, I could play my minor pentatonic skill. It matches, per, it matches perfectly. Five notes. Now, I told you in Western music there are seven notes. So two notes are missing. So we have the one that's given to me. I've got to respect the one. The two is not given. Great. Well, which one do I use? The major two or the minor two? Whichever one I want. It's not indicated by the track. So that's where me as a lead player, I have options. I have freedom. I can pick minor second or major second. The three is given to me. It's a minor three. Keep that. The four is also heard in this backing track, so I'm going to keep that. The five is given to me, I'm going to keep that. The six is not, so I could play a major six or a minor six, right? Freedom. The seventh is given to me, we hear a seventh in this track, that's the minor seven. So really, I don't have that many options as a lead player here, if I want to respect the elements here. I've got two notes that I can kind of vary. I can alter the second and the sixth. Now, when you improvise, when you're conversing over a backing track with a group of people or whatever, you need to match the elements that are given to you. Um, I'm not going to join uh, a group of um, guys talking about uh, sports and jump in and, and, and talk about cooking. right? I'm going to try to match elements. But, but within that conversation, I still have freedom. I could talk about my favorite team or whatever it is. Uh, which would not be a good idea because I don't watch sports. I don't know anything about it. I just pretend. But um, that's besides the point. So, so here, we don't have that much freedom. We can alter the two and the sixth. Now, as far as the freedom goes, you don't want to like uh, pick a major second on one bar and then on the next, go to the minor second. You, you want to commit. 
because if you don't, it's going to sound The listener doesn't really have, a t have time to kind of relate to what you're saying. You want to stay, commit to one of these choices and stay with it for a little while. That's, that's going to help your, your flow of ideas. So let's, uh, let's try to make up a scale with the limited choices we have here. The choices are the second minor or major and the sixth minor or major. And there's no wrong or right answer here. Uh, some scales are going to sound more common than others, more, more Maybe you'll be more at peace with them because you've heard them over and over. doesn't mean that the other options are wrong. So a very popular choice over a track like this would be to use a major second and a major sixth. So if I add the major second and the major sixth to the five notes that I'm already hearing in the backing track, I will have a scale or an alphabet, a musical alphabet made of a one, which is A, major second, minor third, it's given to me the other track. The fourth and the fifth are also given to me the other track. Major sixth, that is my choice. I can do that. And minor seventh. Okay, that has a name. It's the Dorian mode, but it doesn't really matter. You don't need to need, know the name. The name is just to communicate with others. As long as you know the formula, the blueprint, the way that that alphabet is built, you're good. So if I play that scale over this backing track, it's going to fit perfectly. Right? So that's my alphabet. Now I just need to speak it, make words using some of these uh, letters, a seven letter alphabet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll make a word by maybe picking the, the first letter, the third, and the second. That's a word that would work over this backing track. make another word maybe with uh, the fifth letter, the fourth, and the seventh. So five, four, seven. I like that. Now what if I combine both words together? This word that I did, five, four, seven, and one, three, two. Let's try that. It's a great phrase. And I'm speaking that language automatically because I respected the elements and I knew that the elements that were not given to me, I have choice and freedom. And I'm going to be understood by this thing and by the listener too. So that's the idea. And uh, that the, the cool thing with music is that you don't need to learn tons of licks and vocabulary. You just need the alphabet. That's the key that is going to unlock anything else. You know the alphabet, you could start speaking. You just need to respect the elements. Let's try another alphabet that might work over this track. So again, this backing track is made of a one, minor three, four, five, minor seven. I can change the second to the sixth. Let's try a minor sixth this time. So we've got a one, a major two, a minor three, four, five, minor six. All right, that should work in theory, right? Yes. Now, you might think that, ooh, it doesn't. You know why? It's because we were conversing in the other alphabet and your ear got used to that. That's why. Start fresh, reset, bzz, boop, bah, reset. <laughs> and now, now we can speak that. And the more I speak with that, like, that alphabet, More, it's gonna it's gonna become uh, a safe uh, vocabulary there. I'm starting to get used to it, right? Right now, you're used to that uh, note that that sounded a little off. Or, uh, I'll go back to the major six. Now it sounds weird, right? Because you're used to that language. Once you figured out which alphabet to use, it's just a fun game of communicating. 
you just have the alphabet, you understand how it's built, how it fits the track, and you make words. And then all the things that you do in, in normal, everyday conversation, you bring them to the instrument because, yes, this is really a language. This is a game of speaking and conversing and, and hearing what the other one has to say. In this case, that's what he has to say. And you're answering to him. And so forth, right? You're just you're just trying new ideas. Maybe you say a word um, uh, really excited. Maybe really timid. Change the pickup, the volume a little bit down. Uh, maybe maybe you say the second letter a little slower. You've got to just listen and respect the elements. Now we focused on the elements of the alphabet. But remember the cues, the clues that you have, rhythm, uh, velocity. You know what? I was looking at the wrong camera. Sorry. <laughs> so rhythm, velocity, and all those things, it, you've got to listen and answer. And anyways, make sure that you download the pack that's going to go with this series of lessons. This was about a minor setting, minor seventh setting. And uh, I'll meet you in the next one. We're going to explore new chord, new ideas, and the pack is available below. It's free, completely free. Just enter your best email address so that I can send you that pack with all the backing tracks we're gonna use in this series of lessons. The charts, on the charts, you will see uh, some scale suggestions that work over the backing track. You will see some colored notes. The colored notes are the notes that are found, that are heard in the backing track you're gonna play over. The ghost notes, the white notes are, are freedom notes. Those are the ones that you chose. Some of these scales have names, some don't. It doesn't matter as long as you respect the elements. Be on the lookout for the next video of this series. And uh, this is your first visit. Thank you. You should subscribe every week. Three videos like this one come out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, helping guitar players around the world find their voice on the instrument, develop that voice to tell their own personal musical story. You have something awesome to say. There's no point in trying to say what he's saying. What your story is better. It's yours. Anyways, thanks for watching this. Practice well. I'll see you in the next video.